Look at me. Just as all the others have. Now that I have you, your soul will be mine forever! Hey y'all, what's up? It's Kellen with K&T Do Halloween. Let's get right into this week's makeover. This one was a lot of fun and it was definitely a challenge to get done in a week. First things first, I have to go through and I have to remove the costume that's attached to the headpiece. I was surprised at how much engineering was actually behind this costume to get the fog to go where it was supposed to go and have everything line up. Before I started creating anything, I really needed to actually test out the idea. I'm adding some finoodles to the arms to help flesh out the costume later on. I'm also building a waist piece out of foam. It actually fits over the three poles and helps hold up his pants and make him look like he actually has some form because under the robe there really wasn't a ton of support. Now I'm building some feet out of pool noodles and some two inch foam. I didn't want to spend a ton of time on them and this was a quick and easy solution that I knew I could cover up with gauze or something later. Moving on to the little girl, I'm going to be giving her some legs and changing out her costume for that of a trick-or-treating mummy. I'm using the foam noodle inserts and the fabric of her gown with some hot glue just to give her body some shape and form without adding weight. This project was extremely costume heavy and in an area that I don't usually dabble in which made it quite the challenge. I'm now going in with just an old pillowcase. I actually used two of them. I cut it into strips and then used hot glue to just wrap it around the body form. You'll see later on that I'm using larger pieces of fabric glued to the back and I'm also using her Velcro piece. I wanted it to look like it was an actual homemade trick-or-treating costume to help sell the effect. This was a lot more challenging than I thought as well, because there was a lot of engineering and thought that went into the fog tube placement. So I had to make sure that the costume fit, but didn't fit too tight and didn't restrict any of the movement. My best advice for anyone who wants to attempt this at home is to test, test, and test again. Make sure before you finally seal it and put it all together that you are testing every piece. Now I'm moving on to creating the neck piece for the costume. If you notice, the nightgown has a really large ruffle that's clipped high up on her neck that actually helps cover the fog tube that's coming out of her mouth. I needed something that would cover the mechanism but not restrict any movement to the prop and also wouldn't get caught. So I opted to create the exact same concept as the ruffle from the nightgown. I just added strips of fabric to help sell the mummy effect. And the last piece I'll be building for her costume is some wired fabric strips. I'm going to be using electrical wire, some pieces from the pillowcase, and hot glue to sandwich it all together. I'll be attaching these to the back of the costume and creating a flowing ribbon effect to almost help sell the magic when you see the costume being picked up and help distract the eye from the fog tube. Now I'm going to put her neck piece onto the costume to test out the mechanism and make sure it works. The original one was attached with a zip tie around the neck, so I used the same exact method. And last, I'm just going to attach those flexible wire fabric strips that I made to the back of her neck. Now I'm going to move on to getting the head prepped. I'm just putting some painter's tape over the eyes and also over the opening and the lights in the mouth. I'm moving on now to creating some stretchy pieces of flesh on the side. Initially I thought latex would work good here, but it just wasn't working out, so I ended up using some strips of gauze, attaching them at the cheekbone and then down at the jaw, and going back over those fabric strips with hot glue, letting the hot glue run down, and that created a really cool fleshy effect that was more solid than latex and actually stuck to the mask. I'm doing all of this first before I paint it out, 
so I don't have to worry about messing it up later. Now time to give the face and hands a base coat of flat black spray paint. I did two coats and then I'll go ahead and move on inside to finish painting. Now moving on to the fun part, the painting. I'm using some flat latex exterior paint in a brown color and I'm dry brushing on several layers. This allows me to help build the depth while still keeping all the details and the depth in the shadows. I gotta be honest, I was really excited to see this sculpt. However, I was super disappointed at how much detail the sculpt actually had for this prop, but was removed by just poor painting from the production facility. I'm going in and adding some white to his teeth, using multiple layers to build up depth and create texture where it isn't. And then I'm gonna use darker paints to actually bring the brighter spots like the teeth back down. I'm just working in with some green paints and then going back over and making his teeth look a little muddier and filling in his nose holes. I'm then moving on to the hands. Same thing I did as above, I'm just basing out with a flat exterior latex brown paint, dry brushing on several layers until I get the texture that I want, and then I'm going back in with several different brown and green tones to dry brush, dab, and stipple to help build up texture and add depth. He looks great so far, and now I'm going to move on to just adding some more texture to his skin tone. I'm going to protect his mouth and water down some white and black paint, and then I'm just stippling it on with a toothbrush. To stipple, I'm just using a toothbrush, dipping it in my watered down paint, and then using my thumb to flick the bristles to add a splattered texture to this top of the surface. Stippling is a great technique to use if you're trying to break up large solid areas of color and add a little bit of texture. Last but not least, I'm just using a very small amount of perma blood in the sunken in areas on his hands and face. I don't really want this to look like blood, I want it to look more like muscle tissue. Being very careful to use it sparingly and not use it in a way where it looks like it's dripping. If you're familiar with the mummy movies, think Imhotep mixed with the temple guards. Now I'm going in and just adding all the final details to his teeth, around his eyes. I'm using a tiny paintbrush just to correct or fill in any areas I'm unhappy with. This part's a challenge for me because I always feel like I could go on forever and I'm never fully happy with how it looks, but I'm pretty pleased with the results here. Now moving on to creating our mummy costume. I'm using two costumes off the shelf from Spirit Halloween. One is an Egyptian costume, the other one is a mummy costume, and I'm using them as the base. They look pretty cool right out of the bag, but of course I had to take it a bit further. Using a leather roughing tool, I just scratched up the waist and the belt area, and then I'm using beige and brown and black spray paint to help break up the shirt texture, as well as add some sand texture down to the skirt on the bottom. For the strips, I'm using cheesecloth I purchased from Home Depot and quickly dunked in some writ dye. There's plenty of videos out there, so I didn't feel a need to cover it. I then cut it into strips, and I'm just using hot glue to wrap the arms and then help build up the body. I wanted it to look organic, and I didn't want to waste a ton of time doing the back. I'm now going back over my brown base with some strips of white cheesecloth, and this is just to add depth. I'll go back in later, as you'll see, and really muddy this thing up. It looks very bright right now, but it's all about adding texture and contrast before you go in and grime it all up. Moving on to the legs, I'm doing the same thing as above. I'm just using the brown cheesecloth with a hot glue gun and meticulously wrapping it up the legs until I have the look I want. There's pool noodles inside of each leg just to help give it some form. This one was a challenge to create support for because it's on that tripod stand, so you really kind of have to work with it. 
And here's how it turns out before I go in and start to make it gross. To make it nasty, I'm going in with my usual yellow spray paint, brown spray paint, black spray paint, and then this time I actually added an almond tone, and that's what creates that sandy or dirty effect. Now I'm going in with some wood stain. This is some fast drying wood stain in a wood oak color. And then I'm going in with some silicone caulk in a brown color, and I'm just adding to the bandages. I wanted him to look like he just crawled out of the ground. I also chose to repurpose the robe off the back. This is just a nod to the mummy character from the movies. And here's the final result before we hook it up to the fog machine. It was a lot of work for one week, but he turned out spectacular. Definitely meets the vision that I had in my head of this really gross, scary mummy sucking life out of a trick-or-treater who was running around impersonating him. This to me was what I originally thought when I first saw the Harvester of Soul props at Spirit Halloween. And it's really cool to actually see it come to life. Just as all the others have. Now that I have you, your soul will be mine forever!
me, just as all the others have. Now that I have you, your soul will be mine forever! Thank y'all so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And remember, this is week two of our eight week Spirit Halloween prop makeover series. Hit the like button if you like this video and be sure to subscribe if you want to see the upcoming prop makeovers. Thanks so much for watching and remember, if you create it, they will come. Bye y'all.